The rattle trap is one of my favorite baits of all time. It has withstood the test of time. And I'll tell you the one thing that I do like the most about the rattle trap today, as opposed to yesteryear, the Mustad hooks, the Mustad triple grip hooks. When we used to get the old rattle traps, the first thing that we would do is we would open up the package and we would throw the hooks away. They were those chrome nickel plated hooks. And they were horrible. Now they got the Mustad triple grip hooks on all of the rattle trap products. What is my favorite way to fish a rattle trap? Is it, is it pump and drop, pump and drop, like a crawdad. That's what a crawdad does. If you, if you spook a crawdad and he flees, he, and that's the way I like to fish my rattle traps a lot of times. Or I'll throw it out there, burn it hard, stop, burn it hard and stop. I love baits that, that you can move and then stop and then move and then stop. And bass do too. They love that. Stop and go, a jig, throw it out there. They always eat it on the way down or a change of direction. Stole that from Bill Simentel. Change of direction is key. That's what I'm trying to say. Stop and go. Things that move and things that stop. And a rattle trap is the same way. Okay, because if we, we bump the grass, we bump the grass and that fish comes up, that fish comes up and she's getting ready to eat the bait. You can, if, when you get into tune, with the rattle trap, with the lipless bait. You can actually feel that fish come up. That bait's going like this. She'll come up and she'll refuse that bait. And just, just the movement, just the pressure waves of that fish coming through there like that and deciding not to eat that. We used to call that being whooshed. Pop, pop. Oh, oh, I just got whooshed. The bait was coming like this and it lost its tracking like this and came back like, some of you guys know exactly what I'm talking about. Be aware of that. When you throw that bait out there, wine, 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 stop. Wine, 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 wine. Stay in touch. This right here. So important. Stay in touch. Just like a chatter bait, just like a, uh, a vibrating jig. Stay in touch with that bait. Rod tip. Very important. Very important. Very important. You lose that or or that's going like this and you can, you can feel that bait just lose its tracking for a second because that four pounder, six pounder runs up and she, she refuses it at the last second and she, but that water that she pushes forward makes that bait lose its tracking and then comes back in line again. What you're telling me now is the direction of focus is now... When, yeah. Oh, I just had that push. Hang on. Hang on. Bring that. Bring it through. It's like push that. Push that crank that you're getting. Right about to go. Right there. <laughs> Got it. Right there. And it seems that like And I'll tell you what, when in that situation, oh, I just got whooshed. If you're team fishing, your guy's got a, he's, he looks, he's right here. You're coming from this way. He winds in, he throws right where you were. Huh, pump, pump, tick, wind, got her. And a lot of times they're these guys. They're the grown ones. So, being aware of your bait, what it's doing at all times, critical. No, no, be that trap, man. I'm telling you, you got to know, you got to understand what's going on at the end of the line. You feel that? Do, 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 just like a chatterbait, right? Chatterbait, you throw it out there. I tell my guys all the time, if you think during the cast, just reel and set, reel and set. This is one right here. Yes! You know, we're talking about lipless crankbaits, but you can't talk about lipless crankbaits without mentioning what type of rod will get the job done the best, most efficiently. Now, I'm the type of guy, I like a seven and a half foot rod, okay? I used to like an eight foot rod. I've kind of, I've come back. I like the seven and a half. I will use a, a seven for rip baits, um, a very soft, a four power, very soft rod for rip baits only. I'm usually out away from structure. I'm usually not in a grassy type of a situation. The four power gets the job done. But for the most part, love the five. Love the five power, love the medium heavy, seven and a half foot, five power rod. It's got some juice, right? But it's not overpowering. It's not that fast or extra fast rod, right? That loads up real quick and has lots of backbone not good for the rattle trap or the lipless type of baits. Not good. You want a rod that's a bit forgiving. Depending on how much grass or how many obstructions I have, a lot of times, if it's a real good rattle trap bite, I'll have two rods there. I've got one for outside of the grass, on the edges of the grass, and I got the other one for getting in the grass. 
I mean, I gotta touch the grass. A lot of times, these grass lakes, Gunnersville, Rayburn, Lake of the Pines, Delta, Clear Lake, you have got to touch the grass and pop it free. If you touch the grass, if you think that you're gonna go fish the grass and snap a rattle trap out of the grass all day long with a four power rod, you're gonna be, you're gonna be wore out at one o'clock, okay? That rod, every time you go to snap it out, that rod's gonna bow and then that bait's gonna pop out of the grass, okay? You're not gonna catch as many fish, you're not gonna have as many efficient throws as you need to be successful. So let's not do that. We got a nice staging point. These fish have got to have that bait touching the grass. They'll, they'll chase it if it doesn't touch the grass. If it touches the grass, stops, and then you snap it out, those four pounders run out there and they grab that thing, okay? You have got to use a medium to medium heavy type of a rod to do that. And in that type of a situation, the different types of lines that we use, you know, we're just, we're gonna match the line to the type of situation that we have with our rattle trap or lipless baits. So if I'm in the grass and I absolutely have got to touch the grass with this lipless, then I'm gonna have a five power rod, medium heavy, just a, just a, just a nice moderate parabolic bend rod, five power, and I'm gonna have 15 or 20 pound fluorocarbon. It doesn't have the stretch. And when, with that stouter rod, with that five power rod, 15, 20 pound fluorocarbon, half ounce rattle trap, it touches the grass, I whine, and it just, it just pops that bait free, pops it free, pops it right out of that grass. And then you're gonna wind it out of there, and that's when you get so many of your awesome bites. Those fish will be sitting there, and it just triggers them. You know, it's a reaction bait, right? What's a reaction bait? A reaction bait triggers a fish that's either gonna go get something to eat, or a fish that's already had something to eat. And he just, you know, I'm sitting here, you know, I just had a couple in and out burgers. I'm good, no, I, I, I'm okay. And then all of a sudden, bang, somebody throws a Twinkie on your plate. You know, I gotta have that Twinkie too. I may not finish that Twinkie, but I'm definitely gonna grab that thing and take a, take a, at least take one shot out of that thing, right? That's just me, that's why I look like this, all right? I'm working on it. But when it comes to that kind of stuff, you gotta, you, you gotta go with the rod and match it with the line for the situation that you're in. And I'm fishing shallow next to deep. And I have got to bump the bottom with my rattle trap or my lipless that I choose to use, but I've got no grass. I've got minimal obstructions, couple of stumps maybe, uh, gravel, pea gravel, whatever it may be, red clay. And you throw that thing through there, wine, 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 stop, wine, 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 stop. I'm gonna use a four power rod. I'm gonna use 15 pound monofilament. That's just me. I, that's in situations like that, I love the 15 mono. With the softer rod in the impoundments that don't have any grass or minimal grass or none, four power rod, 15 pound monofilament, wind, stop, wind, stop, pump, drop, whatever the pattern is, however they want it. With a four power rod and 15 pound monofilament, by the time I swing on that fish, she's got it really good. They, wind, they come up there, they eat that bait, wind, 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 monofilament's got 20 percent stretch, right? like this that rod bows to him like that and you go oh you get awesome hook point penetration now all you got to do is wind and keep that rod loaded and you're going to get to take a picture of that awesome bass you know the other thing when it comes to rods I, I don't like a rod that's got too short of a handle on the back you know I like one I like to keep my rod right up in here you know I like that right there when I pump and drop it just gives you a little more leverage especially when it's cold oh my gosh that rattle trap bite is is really good when the water's cold we all know that it's great in the summertime and great in the it's even better in the fall so don't forget about that hey I just want to give all you folks out there at, uh, in YouTube world everybody that sent us emails and and uh, has, has been in touch with us uh, hey where are the videos where where have you where'd you guys go uh, we went through a major major transition this last year we moved from California to Texas we uh this all started back in february of last year so we've been running 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 getting the house to ready to sell in california uh getting the trans transaction done here uh on our little place here and um so uh we've been we just didn't have time to do the video stuff but i'll tell you what we're gonna start ramping it back up again and we're gonna get this thing cooking again so uh we hope you guys stick around and stay with us uh we're gonna be doing a lot of Texas stuff. I'm gonna go do some California stuff uh, over the next couple of months, and then I'll be back and we're gonna do some Texas stuff, and then we'll be off and running. And it's gonna be awesome, it's gonna be great. I've learned a lot in this sport, I love this sport, and I've got thousands and thousands of days, thousands and thousands of hours 
doing a lot of R&D that you shouldn't have to. So I want to share that with the audience. We're only here for so long and we want to be as good at this as we possibly can as quickly as we can. So uh, I'm all about being honest with myself, uh, especially when it comes to the mechanics. The baits are one thing, the mechanics are completely another thing. So um, I talk about that a lot in my videos. Uh, we're here in Northeast Texas, love it. And uh, we're gonna be bringing you folks a lot more video uh, as time comes on. Bobby Barrick's Bass Class on YouTube, repositioned out here in Northeast Texas. Subscribe to the channel, we'll see you soon. And thanks for coming back. Hey.